Hi, I'm Rachel and I'm here to do my announcement video for the 2018 Sammy Rohr Prize. If you've been watching my channel, you might be aware that for the last couple of years I've been making um, videos uh, chronicling the Sammy Rohr Prize. It uh, awards um, auth emerging Jewish uh, authors uh, in literature, <laughs> in fiction or nonfiction, depending on the year, with even numbers being nonfiction years and odd numbers being fiction years. And so it started in 2007, and I take one year and I um, read and review three of the five uh, nominees for the prize. Anyway, this, uh, this year's prize was announced in April, and I'm just getting into it now. I guess I'm no peg the formerly book prize addict with my announcements here. And also the uh, prize will officially be awarded in uh, July in Jerusalem, I believe. Uh, but I intend to read three of uh, the five picks next month, so I figured I should make the video now before I spoil the three that I'm going to read by, you know, talking about them in videos then. <laughs> so here are the five books that are up for contention. I'm just going to read them off my iPad here. And of course, one of the things I like about uh, nonfiction is that you can just read the title and get the whole spiel. <laughs> The first one is City on a Hilltop, American Jews and the Israeli Settler Movement by Sarah Yael Hirschhorn. <laughs> the second one is a memoir, If All the Seas Were Ink, uh, by Ilana Kirshen. The third one is The Many Deaths of Jew Seuss, The Notorious Trial and Execution of an 18th Century Court Jew by Yair Minsker. The fourth is Jews on the Frontier, Religion and Mobility in 19th Century America by Shari Rabin. And the fifth is The Lost Book of Moses, The Hunt for the World's Oldest Bible by Shannon Tagay. Hopefully I said all those names correctly. <laughs> so I'm picking my three just out of sheer personal interest. I have no idea who could win. Uh, from what it looks like from past winners, uh, the judges have gone the gamut of all these different styles of writing. Uh, the judges being a bunch of journalists and academics and who knows. <laughs> So here's what stuck out to me and what I will hopefully be reading in June. City on a Hilltop, American Jews and the Israeli Settler Movement. Uh, this is uh, on its face a very contentious subject. Uh, the settlers are very controversial as a group. Uh, but actually, uh, Hirschhorn's uh, research apparently takes her to the 1960s, to the beginning of the movement, when settlers uh, weren't so right-wing, but were more left-wing, um, and uh, products of a more progressive um, uh, ideology. So that'll be interesting. Uh, hopefully it'll go a little further in, uh, into the future than that, but I think that historical grounding uh, can help get a fuller picture of uh, what's going on, or, or, or how, how this started anyway, and uh, that's always a useful thing. And at the risk of stepping further into controversy, I thought I'd uh, point out a uh, group uh, in the West Bank, which I think it, where most of uh, the action of her book is set. I don't think she goes into Gaza, but uh, there's this uh, joint settler Palestinian group that's um, come to my synagogue a couple of times uh, in the last few years called Roots. And it's about um, people trying to come together and understand each other's narratives. and. Uh, it's just something I want to point out because uh, you always want to find any sort of silver lining when it comes to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Anything about people coming together and trying to uh, reach some sort of uh, empathy for each other as humans. So, uh, yeah. Next is If All the Seas Were Ink, the um, memoir by Ilana Kirshen. This is the only one that I actually remember uh, uh, seeing in my newsfeed uh, before this award came out. Um, it is a memoir, and I do love memoirs, uh, about a woman who, um, when she divorces, decides as part of her therapy, as it were, to um, read the Daf Yomi, which means that uh, she will read uh, the Talmud uh, in accordance to the way that it's religiously read in increments throughout well, throughout seven years, actually. It's very involved. Not something I've ever done, obviously. Uh, and I feel like, in a way, this might be the sort of thing that on its surface really fascinates me. It's all about a woman trying to come into her own and also trying to access a traditional and very traditionally male 
centric text. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it'll actually be as fun and amazing once I start reading, especially since I know uh, that parts of the Talmud can be tedious or uh, grating. <laughs> and who knows how she's going to fit in parts of her life and if uh, that'll always uh, be, you know, riveting. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> But uh, I, I figured I'll give it a try, and uh, I'm hoping for the best. I'm it just uh, my immediate gut reaction was extreme interest, <laughs> so I figured I should go for it. <laughs> and for people who are interested in the Daf Yomi, my only real other exposure to it uh, comes uh, from Tablet Magazine. They have a writer who. Um, uh, checks in every couple of weeks with uh, what's being studied that week and uh, gives a little bit of a synopsis, so uh, I'll link that below. And finally, my third choice would be Jews on the Frontier by Shari Rabin, all about uh, American Jewish settlers in 19th century uh, Western America, and uh, this is purely out of uh, self-absorbed reasons. My own Jewish family is from the Midwest from Kansas and Missouri and my grandfather was born in the Dakotas and uh, I actually don't know as much about my own family history as I'd like uh, but I tend to uh, read up a little bit on uh, Jews in the Midwest when I can. Um, mostly through novels like Stations West uh, by Alison Amend, which was up for uh, a Sammy Roar Fiction Prize uh, in an earlier year. I'll link to my review of that below. Anyway, this is all well and good, and I'm really hoping this uh, particular uh, historical uh, retrospective, I assume it is, will give me um, some thorough insight into what life was like uh, for, for Jews in that area in that time. But, of course, this is also reminding me how much I should uh, do some personal research on my own, like through Ancestry.com, or maybe even uh, grilling my great aunt about some things. <laughs> So that about covers it for me now. I'll leave uh, links to uh, pertinent Sammy Roar information down below in case you're also interested in taking a look at uh, Jewish fiction and nonfiction that uh, has come up through the, the works in these last 10 or so years. And I'll certainly fit it in somewhere in uh, July about uh, which of these books actually wins and which one I hope will win uh, once I finish the three that uh, I will be reviewing in June. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching everyone, and I'll see you next time.